Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about eight reasons that you potentially could fail your driver's test. And we'll give you those reasons and ensure that you pass your driver's test first time. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Driver. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about eight reasons that you could potentially fail your driver's test. So we're going to show you the things that you need to avoid for the purposes of your driver's test, but we're also going to give you all the skills, abilities, and techniques and knowledge that you need to be successful and pass your driver's test first time. So Katie is here. Hello, Katie. Margaret is here learning to drive as an adult here. These videos have helped me so much and we're so happy that we can help out Margaret. And if you have any questions at all, drop me a note, uh, leave me a comment here and uh, we'll do what we can to answer your questions. The other thing we're working on here over at the Smart Drive Test website is I'm working uh, on putting together a subscription for people. And one of the things I can offer in terms of the subscriptions over at the Smart Drive Test website is making sure that I answer your questions because unfortunately, I don't, I'm not sure what's happening with the interface here on YouTube, but I'm having a difficult time getting back to people who have responded to questions and I'm having kind of a discussion with them. So I can't necessarily guarantee that I'm gonna be able to answer your question here on the YouTube channel because it's incredibly clunky right now and to try and get back to people's discussions when they've replied to my responses and those types of things is just, just about nigh impossible. So Corey is here, Bricks for Wheels Hall Face. Hello from Toronto. DC is in Ontario as well. Uh, Jordan, I'm from BC and I was wondering where is the speed limit in a construction zone? Uh, Jordan, generally they will have the speed sign underneath the construction sign. It doesn't mean that there's always, uh, always going to be a speed zone in a construction zone. However, know that in some places, for those of you in the United States of America, in many construction zones, if you are speeding and there are speed zones, uh, those types of things, then uh, the, the fines doubled. That's what I need, needed to say to you about uh, you know, making sure that you're paying attention to uh, speed zones and those types of things. Uh, Hall phase thinking of Discord. <laughs> I... Yeah, I'm, I'm reluctant to go to Discord because I just don't need another social media platform. I would rather have some of this stuff on my own real estate. And this is the reason that I'm going to the Smart Drive Test channel is to try and have that subscription. And as part of that subscription, I'll answer people's questions. All right. Uh, uh, Yomide. Yomide. Hello from Michigan. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, really great. Uh, lots, lots of uh, smart drivers use this week. Tons and tons of people have passed their driver's test. Uh, it's been an incredible month uh, for smart drivers passing their driver's test. Of course, it's also the busiest <laughs> time of the year for young drivers, new drivers getting the, their learner's permit, getting their driver's license. And right now with COVID and uh, closed circuit testing and shortened tests and those types of things, there is a lot of stuff going on and they're just getting going there in Ontario. For those of you who are tuning in from Ontario, tons and tons of stuff that they're doing there. And, it, and so, you know, you have to wear a mask, you have to wear gloves, all of those types of things. Okay. Uh, Jordan, what if the speed limit isn't posted in the construction zone, then it's going to be whatever the speed, the posted last posted speed is Jordan. It's going to be on a highway uh, 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour, unless otherwise posted. Uh, if you're in the city, it's going to be uh, 50 kilometers an hour, 30 miles an hour, depending on where you are. Okay. Uh, pass the driver's test. Thank you for your tips. You're most welcome, Pathfinder. Uh, Sophia, we'll get to helping you out with your permit test there. I love your channel. It helps me out so much. I learned a lot of your channel, and it's awesome and very helpful. Thank you so much, Hope. And that's really great that we can help you out. Rosa, I'm really grateful for all your great advice and uh, really great that you stop by with your kind words there, Rosa. So that's awesome. And stay green. <laughs> I don't even remember that video, Corey. That's awesome that you got that. All right, so we're going to get over to the slideshow here. So essentially what I do with the, I go through the presentation. It's about a 15 to 20 minute presentation. Uh, talking to you reasons why you potentially could fail your driver's test and then I'll come back and I'll spend the remainder of the hour answering people's questions on uh, any questions they have related to passing a driver's test, being a safer, smarter driver, or starting a career as a truck or bus driver. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. And if you're 
new, hit that like button if you're watching on the replay. Hit that like button as well and share it around on social media. That certainly helps us out and grows the Smart Drive Test channel and makes people around the world smarter, safer drivers. Okay, here we go. Eight reasons that you could potentially fail your driver's test. First impressions, okay? Think about what your vehicle looks like when you show up at the driving test center. Think about what you're wearing. You know, have you have you shaved in a couple of days? Or you haven't combed your hair in a week? Those times, kinds of things. Remember, you don't get a second uh, a second chance to make a first impression. So you know, wash your car, clean all the fast food wrappers out of the footwells, and those types of things. Especially in this day and age of COVID and whatnot, right? It's going to be kind of crazy for you. So make sure that you're you know, make a good impression the first time so that the examiner's like, oh, okay, this person's got their stuff together and, you know, they got all the boxes checked and they're going to do all right. All right. So I've been cleaning up uh, the store over at the Smart Drive Test website. I didn't realize that it was such, <laughs> such a disaster. Anyway, uh, there's a couple of courses there you can buy. Just pass your driver's test first time uh, for $27. It's on sale. As well, you can buy the package, the course package. You can buy passenger driver's test, defensive driving, and winter driving. Uh, the winter driving course will work for any inclement weather, so have a look at that as well. The link is down in the description. That will take you over to the Smart Drive Test store, and you can uh, look at those courses and other courses. Uh, the winter driving course is on sale as well, and there's a bunch the air brake course for CDL drivers and whatnot. So there's a lot of stuff you can have a look at over there. All right, for those of you new to the Smart Drive Test channel, my name is Rick August. I do have a PhD. Uh, during the 1990s, I drove truck uh, in and out of the United States, mostly LTL freight. For those of you who don't know what LTL is, it stands for less than load. Essentially, just means that you've got eight or 10 drops on a trailer. Uh, so I used to go into New York City and Jersey, New Jersey and whatnot, and be there for a couple of days doing deliveries. Uh, and what else was I gonna say? Oh, and. <laughs> So I drove in the 1990s. I went back to trucking for a very short period of time in 2016 uh, when I started building the channel. And I realized that between the 1990s and 2016, uh, you know, almost 20 years, uh, not a whole lot had changed in trucking. I mean, GPS and cell phones and those types of things, yeah, really great, but uh, not a whole lot had changed in trucking. I became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. I've worked with, uh, new drivers mostly commercial drivers but uh, i've also done some work with driver rehabilitation and work with new drivers to get them back to uh, returning to driving after they've had a debilitating injury such as a stroke or losing a limb or something like that 2006 i graduated from the university of melbourne with a phd in legal history it's a study of policing courts and prisons my expertise is in policing as it relates to traffic and while I was attending the University of Melbourne, I drove coaches for Greyhound there in Australia. So I have bus experience as well. Uh, new video this week. This is the fundamentals of a driver's test. Space management. I talk about space management a lot in combination with speed management, observation, and communication. I dedicated just this video to only uh, controlling space around your vehicle. And you can see there in the thumbnail, uh, when you stop in traffic, make sure that you can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the pavement all the time, every time. Never lose this habit, okay? Because after you get your license, uh, you're going to stop in traffic and you don't want to be right up against the vehicle in front of you because there's all kinds of reasons and I go into that in the video. So have a look at that video to control space and to be a safer, smarter driver after you get your license, all right? So number eight, reason number eight for failing the driver's test is, is that you do not have mastery of the primary controls. You're not, you don't know how to control the steering wheel, the throttle, or the brake. And for those of you in Europe and other parts of the world, it's also the clutch. You don't have good control of the clutch. So the other thing about doing slow speed maneuvers to gain mastery of the primary controls is that you also learn where your vehicle is in space and place. Particularly if you're working in a parking lot, you're working with pylons, you're going to learn where your vehicle is in relationship to other objects on the road, whether it's other road users or whether it's other fixed objects along the roadway. So this is critical. 
If you don't have these fundamentals in place, you are not going to be successful on a driver's test. So make sure that you get these fundamentals in place. I know that it's not sexy going to a parking lot and working with pylons and starting out. Uh, but again, these are like scales to music. These are like drills to sports. You need to have this in place. Okay, lane positioning. Uh, you don't have good centering of the lane. And if you're driving a larger vehicle like a pickup truck or a van or something like that, and you touch that center line, the dividing line, you know, whether on the right or whether on the left, you're going to lose five or ten points. Uh, if you don't set your vehicle up correctly uh, when you're making left-hand turns, you make the left-hand turn and you don't turn into the left-hand lane, that's going to be demerits as well. Uh, and if you don't automatically move back over to the right lane after making a left-hand turn, you're going to lose points again for that as well. And eventually what's going to happen is, is you're going to have enough demerits assigned to you while you're doing your driver's test that you're going to demerit out. You're going to have too many demerits and you're going to fail your driver's test. Okay, emergency vehicles, uh, moving the vehicle laterally, making sure that you're shoulder checking and those types of things. So you have to have good control of the vehicle and make sure that the vehicle is in the center of the lane at all times. All right, this is probably, I get this two or three times a week with students that they say, oh, I failed my driver's test, the, dri the driving examiner was mean and uh, he or she said I was going too slow and I was just being cautious. Yes, if you are going too slow on the driver's test, you will fail your driver's test. If you are not taking gaps that should be taken because you didn't practice enough, you are not going to be successful on your driver's test. So make sure that you get the vehicle up to speed as quickly as possible. Yes, space management is going to trump speed management, but you need to follow the posted speed limit. You need to get the vehicle up to speed as quickly as possible. And you can't be too cautious. You can't go too slow. Number five, observation. I get this at least once a week that new drivers taking a driver's test fail because they didn't shoulder check twice for every time they move the vehicle laterally, uh, which means move the vehicle sideways for lane changes or just in a parking lot or those types of things. Or they didn't shoulder check two times for every turn. This is absolutely imperative for the purposes of a driver's test. Looking far down the road, because if you're not looking far down the road, the vehicle's not gonna center itself in the lane. You're gonna be wandering back and forth, side to side, monitoring gauges, looking out the rear window and those types of things. And your observation is directly tied to your speed control. Uh, students ask me this all the time about speed control, how much over the speed limit can they go and how much below the speed limit. You shouldn't be going three or four kilometers an hour or 30, three or four miles an hour over or below the speed limit. What matters though is, is that you are adjusting your speed limit very quickly within 10 to 12 seconds because your scanning pattern is repeating itself every 12 to 10 seconds and therefore you should be checking your speedometer as part of that scanning pattern and you're changing and adjusting your speed as part of your driving because uh, for the purposes of a driver's test, you have to demonstrate to the examiner that you can control the vehicle uh, in changing traffic conditions that you have due care and control of the vehicle. Road signs, action contrary to, uh, to the sign. So if you make a left-hand turn and it says no left-hand turns, that's gonna be an automatic fail. Uh, you fail to adjust your speed according to the speed signs. Uh, you don't get over when the lane ends. Uh, stop signs, you don't know the difference between four-way stops and two-way stops. Uh, school zone signs, and I need to say this, <laughs> school zone signs. <laughs> Uh, they're only in enforced when school is in session. So right now with all the COVID and summer holidays and those types of things, uh, school speed zones do not apply, okay? Road markings, railway crossings, all of this, you have to keep all of this in mind while you're driving. And again, you need to practice in and around the driving test center uh, where you're going to be taking your license, okay? So you strike a fixed object, you strike the curb, and knock the examiner out of his or her seat when you're doing your parallel parking, you're not going to be successful. Turning, parking, maneuvering, slow speed maneuvers, parking, uh, three point turns, K turns, Y turns, whatever you call them. Now, one of the things I wanna say about uh, slow speed maneuvers, okay? So seven eighths of the test is in a forward motion. This is not necessarily true right now with COVID. A lot of you are going to be doing parking lot tests. You're going to be doing slow speed maneuvers. You're going to have like a little mini driving course depending on where you are. And 
slow speed maneuvers. So seven eighths of the road test for those of you doing shortened road tests is going to be in a forward motion, okay? However, it's not the seven eighths that gives you trouble. It's the what challenge new drivers is the slow speed maneuvers, is slow speed or um, parallel parking, uh, three point reverse, not <laughs> three point turn, uh, ba straight line backing. And uh, what's the other one? The Ohio maneuverability test, which you have to do if you live in the state of Ohio. These are what are going to give you trouble. However, if you want to learn faster, if you want to become a more competent driver more quickly, practice slow speed maneuvers. Go to the parking lot, spend some time at the beginning of your driving, at the beginning of your learning, and you will become a more competent driver more quickly because these practicing these slow speed maneuvers is going to improve your overall driving you are going to be a better driver i know that it's not sexy but spend the time and do it all right so we get back here number two dangerous action if the instructor intervenes during the driving test that's an automatic fail on a driver's test automatic okay so if you block an intersection you back at an intersection uh insufficient gap when turning uh, your action causes another road user to take evasive action, then you are not going to pass your driver's test. So know that a dangerous action is going to cause you to fail your driver's test. Uh, and I got something about a fixed object here. Strike a fixed object, dangerous action. So striking a fixed object, uh, what I wanted to say about that is if you're parking, say for example in the DMV and you back up and there's a concrete barrier behind you, which often there is at most of these places because you know new drivers don't have a lot of confidence and sometimes they'll hit the brake or hit the gas instead of hitting the brake and they'll jump back and hit the concrete barrier. If you strike that concrete barrier during a driver's test, you will not be successful. You will fail your driver's test. The number one reason why you don't pass your driver's test is because you don't know what's on the test. You haven't done the work to figure out what's on the driver's test. And I had a student a smart driver this week tell me that they failed the driver's test because they didn't know that it was a closed circuit test. I mean, how, I mean, have you been living under a rock? I'm sorry. I don't mean to be, you know, crass, but how can you not know that? How can you not, you know, go and investigate and figure out whether it's a closed circuit test, a shortened test, or whether it's a closed circuit test with a kind of a mini course? So you must know what's on the test for your test center. Parallel parking with cones, parallel parking, three-point turn, reverse stall parking. Uh, where are the schools? And hire a local driving instructor to take you out before your driver's test and he or she will be able to give you specific information about the test in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test. Epic, uh, in some states in the United States located in the deep south like Georgia and Mississippi, uh, West Coast California school zones are in effect despite having COVID-19 cases. Okay, so I stand corrected. Thanks, Epic, for that. There are some places that speed zone signs are still in place. But again, this is the nuance that a local driving instructor is going to be able to give you that information. I'm going to be able to give you general information about passing a driver's test, but you need to get those little details because those little details could be the difference between not passing a driver's test and passing a driver's test, right? Because when you go for your driver's test, it's not about... It's not about perfection. You don't have to get perfection. You just have to get passed. You can work on perfection after you get your license. Our goal is to get you a driver's license and get you out and working and driving on your own. That's what you want to do. Uh, Gordon, you mentioned that school speed zones are not enforced because school is out. I know a couple of guys who got ticketed for going 60 in a school zone uh, during the summer, summer holidays. Uh, that's... That, I think that would, Gordon, I think that would be easily uh, easily fought in court. But the other thing is, is that they're going 60 in a 50. That's probably why they got ticketed, not because they were going in a school zone. So uh, I would look, I would suggest to your friends to look into that. Okay, so bonus, lane positioning, block intersections, dangerous actions. I talked about these things. Don't block an intersection on a driver's test. And this doesn't matter whether it's a major or a minor intersection. Do not enter an intersection unless you can clear that intersection for the purposes of your driver's test. Again, I'll mention the courses over at the Smart Drive Test website. Corey's put the link up there for you. Have a look over there. All the courses are guaranteed. Uh, if you don't pass your driver's test or your air brakes within 60 days, uh, complete refund or you're simply not satisfied with the course, we'll give you your money back. Okay, so have a look at those. 
And good luck on your driver's test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. All right, we'll get back over here. There we go, and we'll answer any questions you have about passing a driver's test. Uh, Gordon says they told the police the school was out, but they said that the ticket is valid because the school is a part of the larger neighborhood. It is therefore a joint regulation. Uh, Gordon, like I said, I would I would challenge that in court. If that was me, I would challenge that in court. The problem is, is that if they're doing 60 in a 50 kilometer an hour zone, that's where they're probably going to get their fine. Is is, is that they're going to you know, they're going simply too fast in a, in a local residential area. Uh, Hall face. Thank you so much for that compliment. Okay. Corey's put all those videos up there. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Corey. Uh, and Corey's put up the playlist for how to drive a car for beginners. Plus plenty of exercises to help you out. Uh, forward figure eights, reverse figure eights, reverse figure eights are my, by far my favorite with new drivers. Uh, and so you can do forward figure eights with the pylons. And then once you get comfortable with that, then do reverse figure eights. And I'll, I'll tell you right now that reverse figure eights are going to mess with your head a little bit. So definitely do those and they will definitely, definitely help you out. Okay, Robin. Hello, my friend. I got my beginners at 28 and just passed my driver's test at 30. You can do it. Excellent. Thank you so much for that encouragement to other smart drivers, Robin. Awesome. Uh, Katie says, I'm learning to drive and I'm 25 and Katie, you can definitely do it when you're a little bit older. Uh, and Tommy's here from Oshawa and Pathfinder, please make a video regarding after passing the driving test, driving alone, it would help new drivers. Hello from Hawaii. Yes, Pathfinder, that is on my list. <laughs> uh, after license, uh, I do have a video up here, but it's an older video on, uh, what am I going to say? 10 things that you need to consider after passing your driving test. Corey will put that video up for you. But as I said, it is an older video. I need to redo it. And uh, for all of the smart drivers now watching on the live stream tonight, or if you're here watching on the replay, if there's any videos, older videos that you want me to redo because I'm making a list of the older videos and I'm going through them and I'm redoing them because I know that, you know, <laughs> Smart drive test has evolved. YouTube has evolved. All of the smart drivers have evolved and we're making stuff better. We're streamlining it. We're getting the information to you right away. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. So we're working on getting one or two done a week of uh, newer videos and helping that, helping you out with that. Uh, Pranav, I passed my G2 yesterday and it was mad easy now. I can forget everything. <laughs> Don't forget everything because we don't want you to die in a car crash. Please don't forget everything. Keep those habits in place. Drive safe, drive smart, and uh, definitely consider uh, the defensive driving course over at the Smart Drive Test website, and that'll help you out as well. Uh, Armadico, I'm 23 and I'm barely going to start learning to drive. I got tired of taking the bus. I had some practice, but I still need to work on my nerves when behind the wheel. Yes, and remember the four most powerful words in the English language. I can do this. You can do it. And you can get your license. Okay? And for all those people tonight who are saying to me, okay, I'm older and, I, and I'm working on my driver's license and I have some anxiety and some nerves. Okay? I was 35 years old when I went back to university and I earned my doctorate degree. I was 35 when I went back to university. I had three courses that I had to finish for my undergraduate degree. I went back, I took a full course load and finished my undergraduate degree, was successful in earning that. And then I went on and I got accepted to the University of Melbourne in Australia and I earned my doctorate degree. So if you're a little bit older, that's not a, that's not, in any stretch of the imagination, it's not a limitation at all that you're a little bit older and going for your driver's license. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Actually, if anything, it, it's, it's going to make it easier for you to meet this challenge of earning and getting your license because now you're a little bit older, you've got some more knowledge about your world and life and how things work. And as well, you've got better study habits. You've got better intentions of moving forward. You've got better discipline. You know that you can bolt yourself down and do the things that you need to do. When I was 20 years old, uh, there was no way that I could have been in graduate school. I was all over the world and trying to figure out what I was doing. And I had so many, you know, oh my God, shiny. Oh, shiny. Oh, look, shiny. <laughs> you know, it wasn't until I was 35 years old that I could actually go into the university and bolt myself down and do what I needed to do 
to be able to move forward and finish my degree. And Margaret, that's awesome. You're 56 and learning to drive. That's awesome. You can you can do it. And as I, you know, you're a little bit older, that's great. You're going to be better at getting to do and do what you need to do in order to be successful in passing your driver's test. Uh, Jerry, uh, my driving test is tomorrow and I've been watching your videos nonstop to prepare myself. Uh, wish me luck, Jerry. You're going to do awesome. Remember to breathe. In through the nose, out through the mouth. That'll cause your body to relax and come back and tell us that how it went. I'm sure you're going to do awesome. Uh, Jerry, where are you taking your driver's test tomorrow? That's brilliant. Uh, Katie, I am taking my driving lessons next Sunday. I'm excited. My friend has been helping me drive, but since it's been a while since he took the test, I thought it would be good to see what I need to work on. Yes. And definitely, uh, Katie, have a look at the space management video that I put up last week. That is if you can nail that, if you can nail that space management thing, that is really, really going to help you out in terms of passing your driver's test. Uh, Tommy says, I agree, Rick. I was 29 when I got my full G in Ontario. I'm 39 now. Awesome. And see, Tommy got his license. He was 29 years old. So you can do it when you're older. You know, and, you know, I've heard so many motivational speakers through my life. You know, I've listened to them all. And, you know, people... I, I, and you know, <laughs> I'll just reveal a little bit about my life right now. I mean, you know, I'm online dating. I'm a single dad and I started you know, looking for somebody that I could start dating and those types of things. One of the things I have figured out or I'm beginning to sense about 50 year olds is, is that they're comfortable. They've got their house and their car and they've got life all sorted out, or at least they think they got life all sorted out and they're comfortable. That's where they're at. And they're not hungry anymore. They're not ambitious. They're not looking for something else to learn because they got their life figured out. Uh, don't do that. Don't be like that. Always be looking for something. Always be learning something. Always be doing something, right? Uh, you know, and it was the same thing with what I was doing. For the last two years, up until a few months ago, with the Smart Drive Test channel and my business, I was looking at it going, well, I'm comfortable. I make more money than I ever made working for somebody else or working in a job. Why would I do any more? And then in the spring... I was looking at all of this, you know, with COVID and all the shutdown and whatnot. And I thought to myself, this is important. This, what I'm doing here is important. This is helping all of you, all the smart drivers, and it's helping all of the people in the world to be safer, smarter drivers. This is important. And that's what you need to do. You need to do something to be happy. It's, it's part of the keys of our happiness in our life. You know, somebody to love something to look forward to, and something to do. You need something to do. You need to be learning. Don't settle in life. Don't be those people that come home every night after a job they hate, lying on the couch watching Netflix all night, and then go to bed and get up and do it again. And, you know, what was that movie, Con Air? You know, when they asked the guy if he was crazy, and he said, no. He said, you know, there's people that get up every day, five days a week, work nine to five. They retire with a gold watch, and two years later they die. And he said, that's insanity. It really is insanity. Be look, you know, and in this world, we live in such a fantastic world of opportunity. <laughs> Do something. <laughs> okay. Uh, Michael, I got my license at 39 years old and still watch, listen to Rick because uh, you always learn something every time. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that endorsement. Michael, that's brilliant. Uh, Pathfinder, you're helping a lot of people. Very thankful for your videos. Blessings to you and your family. Brilliant. CMDR, uh, taking your test on Friday. Awesome. After fighting the booking website constantly. Yeah, I can only imagine the struggle that people are having trying to book a driver's test. It must be just mind boggling and just you just want to chew your ear off. I mean, if you know, I know, I know that's not possible, but oh my God, dealing with all of that. Uh, kombucha and want to know more of what to expect for the driver's test uh, definitely have a look at the uh, driver's test video that is a half an hour video to go through but in detail of what to expect on the driver's test uh, kombucha what was that you were saying about COVID causing the test to be fixed courses and parking lots I'm taking the G1 exit test on the 27th okay so Kombucha, my understanding is, is that in Ontario, they're doing shortened tests there in Ontario. It's not a parking lot test in Ontario. It's shortened tests. Uh, where in Ontario are you taking your driver's test? Uh, 
Ayamai, uh, any advice for driving around trucks? For some reason, I always feel claustrophobic when driving around one. Okay, and you know, that's not just you, it's other drivers as well driving around big trucks. One of the things that I will say about driving around big trucks, don't hang, or hang out around big trucks. Either drive behind them and stay back, have a good following distance, your th two to three second following distance, or if you're gonna pass them, you know, get on the throttle and get past them. Don't just hang out there beside them, okay? And uh, also know, and this may be some information for other smart drivers, that if you're driving on a multi-lane highway, an interstate or a freeway, and it's more than two lanes, big trucks can't be out in that far left lane. They're limited to the first two lanes. So know that for the purposes of driving on those big multi-lane roads and whatnot. Okay. Sulit, uh, I am in Canada. I am in British Columbia, Canada, but I've driven through the States and most of the information in, in uh information and skills and techniques that I'm giving you here on the channel are directed towards uh, people in the United States. Most of that is as well, but it'll work here for Ontario as well. Uh, all of the provinces in Canada, not just Ontario, but all of the other ones as well. Okay. Uh, Gordon, if you take your test at 25, but look 19, then at least you can relate to the high school's uh, you, students you were sitting next to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rosa, true insanity. Yes, indeed, true insanity. I just remember that in Con Air when they asked him that question, and I just went, yeah, that, that's the definition of insanity. Uh, okay, uh, Margaret, how many driving lessons should I take? I live in Brooklyn, New York, and have no driving experience. All right, so Margaret, yeah, I would definitely work with the driving instructor there, uh, Margaret, and the driving instructor will be able to give you a better sense of how many driving lessons and those types of things that you should be able to take because you know I haven't been in the vehicle with you so I, I can't say definitively you know whether you should take 10 hours of driving lessons or whether you should take 20 hours of driving lessons because I mean you might pick it up really well you know you might have an aptitude for driving that you never knew you had so you may only need 10 hours of driving lessons so work with a local driving inst instructor and he or she will be able to help you out the other thing that I would uh, counsel you, Margaret, is to do a little bit of research and try and find a driving instructor that has worked with seniors. Now, I'm not saying that you're, you're a senior in any stretch of the imagination. What I'm saying is, is that works with uh, people who are in their 70s and 80s who are getting retested or taking their driver's license again. They tend to have a bit more depth to their teaching and a bit more understanding of being able to help you out with anything that you might be struggling with. So that would be my, my suggestion for that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sulit, this is my first time here uh, live. It's amazingly great stream. I'm so happy that we can help you out. Uh, Harrison, uh, it was normal G2 test in Ontario. Yes. Okay. So it might be a bit shortened there, but for the most part there, I don't know how they're ever going to catch up. <laughs> oh, kombucha. You're in Ottawa on Walkley Road. That's where I did my driving instructor's license. Uh, was in Ottawa. And as part of my driving instructor's license in Ottawa, Canada, I had to go to Walkley Road and I had to do the G2 exit test uh, when I was there. So <laughs> I know exactly where you are and what you're doing. Yeah, it's going to be a shortened test. So you're going to be fine. Uh, yeah, so it's not, a, it's not an in-parking lot test. It's, you're actually going to be out on the road. Sebastian, greetings from Surrey. Hello, my friend. Uh, bought for left turns during a drive test. G2, is it okay to slow down and move into the intersection when it's green or should I stop behind the crosswalk then move when it's green? Okay, so bought. Corey will put up the video for you on left-hand turns, but the way that I teach left-hand turns and it's the safest because it's defensive as well is, is that when you're in the queue and you're waiting to go, you stop with the front steer tires on the front crosswalk line. You're watching the traffic come. When you see the gap coming, then you move into the intersection and you meet the gap. So this is the gap. This is you. The gap is coming. The gap is coming. You move in, you meet the gap, and you turn. And that's how you do a left-hand turn. Because the reason that I tell students to stop with the front steer tires on the front crosswalk line is, is that you are committed to the intersection, but you're not in the intersection. If something goes wrong, you're not going to be there. So say, for example, somebody... Uh, uh, runs the red light or there's a crash in the intersection or something like that, you're not going to be in there. You're not going to be involved. So that's why I teach it that way. There's also, there's other schools of thinking. There are the instructors that tell their students to move right into the intersection. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Even when it's congested, 
uh, even when there's lots of traffic and it's congested, I don't agree with that. So front steer tires on the front crosswalk line, you see the gap and then move forward into the intersection, okay? Uh, Raj Winder, uh, please, please share some videos for reverse parking. Thank you. Okay, Corey, we'll get those up for you. We have tons, not tons of them, but we have those specifically dedicated to that maneuver for sure. Uh, Michael, truckers don't like it when you just crawl next to them. No, they don't, Michael. <laughs> and it, not only do they not like it, but it's also, it's not safe for you because there's huge blind spots and trucks and those types of things. It's not that they're going to do something uh, malicious, but there's a possibility that they could do that for you, okay? Desire, I'm in Ohio. Where'd you go? Uh, I'm in Ohio. What's the main part uh, I should worry about? Uh, I'm taking my test next week. Okay, so Desire, uh, you have to do the Ohio maneuverability test as part of your test there in Ohio. And one of the other things that I learned, and I have to redo the video on Ohio maneuverability test, I'm gonna, I was gonna redo it anyway because it wasn't that well done. Uh, I was, at the time, I remember I was messing around with uh, videoing techniques and stuff. So I need to redo it. But one of the things I've some smart drivers told me this week was, is that when you pull up and you've got the nose cone for the maneuverability test, you have to, depending on whether they tell you go right or left, you have to pull up. So the rear bumper is in line with that nose cone. And then when you back up out of the chute and you get to the end of the cone, you have to stop. So the front bumper is in line with the two end cones. And I did not know that previously. This is the first time that it's been mentioned to me. So I'm going to redo the video uh, on the Ohio maneuverability test to put those pieces in there and to try and to make the video uh, more punchy, <laughs> not like punch you in the head, but you know, more to the point. <laughs> Bailey, uh, any suggestions for improving focus when driving? I failed for turning right on a red light. Uh, Bailey, did you come to a complete stop before you turned right on the red light? Because you can turn right on a red light as so long as you uh, come to a stop first and give way to all of the road users, then yes, you can do that. Uh, Gordon, uh, when I was driving on the 407 to Hamilton, I was beeped out a few times when I was going 130 as the other vehicles overtook me. Should I have been going faster? Uh, Gordon, no, 130 on the 401, uh, the 407, that's, that's probably all right. <laughs> I really can't understand why you've been beeped at. Uh, for those of you, uh, in the States, uh, let's see, uh, so the speed limit is, I think, is it still 407? Is it still 100 kilometers an hour, which is 62 miles an hour? 130 is about 78 miles an hour. Uh, you know, you're hauling along there all right. <laughs> That's so weird. Oh, Colin, uh, Irick, do you have any tips for pulling along the side of a curb? I'm able to get within 8 to 10 inches of the curb, but would like to get a bit closer. I'd love to hear back from you. Yes, we have a video on curb parking as well, and Corey will get that up for you. Uh, okay, and my friend Tim from Drive Smart BC, if any of you want to know any information about legislation and whether something is legal or not, uh, Tim has an incredible uh, website uh, with terrific, uh, tremendous resources, so Drive Smart BC. Uh, Tim, I learned more in an hour at driving school than I did in a day from my parents. The school knows how to deliver in order and what you need. And yeah, and exactly what Tim is saying. And, you know, I had somebody have a go at me this week because they failed their driver's test, but they took my pasture driver's test course first time. If you take my pasture driver's test first first time, the first thing, the, right at the top in big, bold, red letters, it says you have to take a practice driving test with a local driving instructor. Uh, <laughs> they didn't do it. So the guarantee wasn't valid. I mean, you know, I'll give him his money back anyway because... Unfortunately, didn't pass, and I feel bad about that, and I'll help him do that. But it's, it's exactly what Tim says. Driving instructors teach people how to pass a driver's test every day, and they teach you how to, to, how to put in place safe driving habits, and they do it every day. They help people every day do that task, so they know the best way to say it to you. They know the best way to present the information to you and if they're good instructors they're good teachers they will try to figure out what you already know and then they'll take the information that they want to want you to learn and they'll try and hang it on what you already know those are the good instructors and it's what's what's tim's saying you know your parents are great as mentors and other people that are going to help you learn how to drive but driving instructors driving <laughs> 
you know, authorities, those are the people that have the information and are be able to import and part that to you to help you out and be successful. Okay, so Corey's put up the video on how to turn left. Uh, Gordon Mini Schools also state that you should be looking down when parking as opposed to looking forward. That nearly cost my brother a dent. Uh, uh, not sure about what that how that's going, Gordon, but you should really be look, you know, doing 360 degree scan, looking out in the back, the direction that the vehicle is traveling and those types of things. I, I find it hard to believe that a professional driving instructor or a driving school would be telling you to look down. That's the last thing that we would ever be telling you as a driving instructor. We always want your vision up, right? And looking in the direction that you want to go. Okay. Uh, Natalie, uh, hello from Colorado. Thank you, Rick. Always helpful and informative. So glad we can help out. Uh, salute, uh, sir. How do you let fear go away if I have been driving, especially in Texas, where it's very hectic, six lane roads and those types of things? Uh, sell it. Keep your space around your vehicle. Manage space. Have a look at that video that I put up last week. If you can manage space and keep that good buffer of space around your vehicle and try and really focus on what you're doing and not what all the other people are doing and all the vehicles and traffic and road users, because I know that it can get distracting with all of the other road users on the roadway. So, uh, you know, focus on what you're doing and that will help to alleviate your anxiety. The other thing that I would suggest for any of you smart drivers watching now or watching on the replay, if you're having trouble with anxiety, try to drive on these busy highways at times when it's not uh, rush hour traffic. So, you know, before seven o'clock in the morning, after five o'clock at night and those types of things, and that'll help to alleviate some of your anxiety, okay? Uh, Katie, I'm in Ohio as well, and I want to know, is it okay to use a backup camera uh, due to COVID? At least uh, what I've heard, the instructor is not in the vehicle with you. No, the instructor is not in the vehicle with you, Katie. And uh, Corey will put up the video for you on using a backup camera. You can use a backup camera for the purposes of your driver's test now, but you can't use it as your main source, uh, your main line of sight, okay? Uh, you have to look out the back window, but you can check it like you would a mirror. Just kind of have a look at it. <laughs> Solid. Sir, you need to take some, a break, some water or something. Okay, I got some water right here in my good old Spider-Man cup. Tim, you're always most welcome, my friend. Uh, sell it, yield. You always have to scan or be stop, right? Or not, just go ahead. Yes. Uh, Sophie, when do you recommend taking driver's ed? Okay, so Sophie, you can learn how to drive without taking driver's ed or taking driving lessons, but one of the things that I do recommend is that if you didn't take driving lessons with a driving instructor, take a practice driving test with a local driving instructor before you show up for your test at the DMV. Uh, that way, they will be able to fill in all the nuances for you, the little details that we don't know about. For example, uh, we were mentioning earlier that there are some states that are still enforcing school speed zones, even though school isn't in session. Those are the little bits of nuance that you need to know. As well, uh, they'll tell you the signs around the tr uh, driving test center. They'll show you where that they do the slow speed maneuvers and they do the parking and those types of things. It's money well spent is spending an hour and going out with a local driving instructor and they will be able to give you all of the information that you need to be able to be successful on your driver's test. Okay, and it's really busy right now on the live stream. We've got like 75 people on the live stream, which I think is a record for our live stream. Uh, if I don't get to your question, uh, send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. I'll do the best to answer your question and get back to you or just retype it and I'll do my best to get you an answer to your questions, okay? Uh, but also if there's an emergency vehicle behind me, do I have to put the vehicle on, on park uh, when it's uh, beside the curb or just hold the brake during the test? Thanks for all the uh, help. Uh, but it depends how long you're there. Uh, most of the time when it's an emergency vehicle, you can just hold the brake and the vehicle will go past and then you can, you know, mirror signal, shoulder check, look, and then resume after the emergency vehicle goes by. There is a video here on uh, how to make an emergency stop. And again, just to reiterate, so Ohio has the Ohio maneuverability test, which is specific to the state of Ohio. California has backing along a curb for 50 feet. And then the province of Ontario in Canada has uh, the emergency stop, which is what you were just talking about if an emergency vehicle comes along. Now, the other thing that I wanna say, and <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I get this two or three times a week where people, smart drivers will come on the channel and they will say, my state doesn't have parallel parking. My driving test center doesn't have parallel parking. Okay, I just want to clarify this to all of you who are watching now and all of you watching on the replay. That's bumpkiss. That is rubbish. That's not true. I don't care who you are, what you think, or what your friends told you. That is not true. Okay, parallel parking is the mainstay of any driver's test anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter. They make you do parallel parking. And even if your friend didn't have to parallel park, then that's fine because that's up to the discretion of the driving examiner, okay? The person who is testing you on for your driver's test. So be ready with parallel parking because the, if the driving examiner had a bad day, they got up in the morning and they dropped the eggs on the ground, they got them out of the out of the fridge and you know the dog pooped on the, on the kitchen floor and they stepped in it and they come out of the house and they're just absolutely in a foul mood, they can make you parallel park. And if you haven't practiced parallel parking, guess what? You're hooped. So don't listen to that bunk. Don't listen to it. It's not true. It is the mainstay of any driver's test anywhere in the world. You have to know how to parallel park. So make sure that you have that in your toolkit when you show up for your driving test that you know how to parallel park, whether it's with cones or whether it's out on the roadway. So, okay. So again, parallel parking. Everybody must have parallel parking. Province of Ontario, emergency stops. State of Ohio, maneuverability test. Uh, state of California backing along a curb 50 feet. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Fantashi, during the driving test, is it preferable to enter the left turning lane when the solid and broken yellow lines start or wait until the white line is broken? Uh, Fantashi, anytime that you get into a turning lane, anytime that you get into an exit lane or a merge lane, get into it as soon as it starts. As soon as it starts. So if you have a left turning lane, get into that left turning lane as soon as it starts. Do not drive over the painted island, but get into the turning lane as quickly as possible. The reason that you do that is so that other vehicles can't creep up in beside you and get into your blind area and cut you off. That's why you wanna try and get into the, uh, into the turning lane as, as soon as it starts, okay? Lightning, hello my friend, I always love the thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on making those better. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, Sullet, great and helpful channel, man. Especially it's live and you're probably the first person who went live to help answer people's questions about driving. Uh, I like to think I am, Sullet. <laughs> but uh, we've also been doing it for, I think, three years now. Almost three or four years. It's been quite a while. Uh, but, uh, but also after a left turn, I have to change lanes to the right, even if the examiner does not tell me to the right. That is correct, Bot. As soon as you make a left, so turning left lane to left lane and then move over to the right lane and then right turns right lane to the right lane, okay? Gamer, uh, hope this title isn't a bad omen for my test on Friday. No, Gamer, you're gonna do fine. We've given you the little things that you need to pay attention to, but you're gonna do awesome on your test on Friday. Uh, Pathfinder, my examiner had a bad day. He made me parallel park twice and 90 degree verse on the parking. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. They must have <laughs> must have had a bad day. Uh, kombucha, an auto Ontario, will the instructor for my drive test be in the car with me or a chase vehicle or something else? No, kombucha, the examiner in Ontario will be with you in the vehicle. So wear a mask, have, your, have gloves with you. You may not need the gloves, but they may request that you wear them for the purposes of your driver's test. Okay, uh, Dark Abyss, I got my test date August 26th and your videos are very helpful. Thank you so much, Abyss, that's awesome. To be in, uh, when I'm going to turn right, can I use the bus stop reserve zone uh, near the intersection in Quebec? Uh, I, you send me that on Google uh, and the address of what you're talking about and I'll be able to have a look at that, uh, rick at smartdrivetest.com and I'll have a look at that and I'll be able to give you uh, more specific information about that. Uh, Mike, would you lose the merits if you don't move to the right lane after turning left? Uh, Mike, yes, you will lose a couple of demerit points for that. The only time that you don't change lanes to the right after turning left is if the examiner indicates to you that within a couple of blocks, you're going to make a left turn again. Okay, so that's the only time that you wouldn't do that. 
Uh, Hunter, uh, I'm from France and I am taking the test in BC on Friday. I would like to know which speed I should assume as I am entering and exiting the highways. It's in uh, rarely indicated. Thanks. Okay, so Hunter, uh, if it's the main highway, the Trans-Canada Highway, it's going to be 100 kilometers an hour most of the time. Know that in the city, it's 30 kilometers, or not 30, sorry, 50 kilometers an hour or 30 miles an hour unless otherwise posted. On highways, it's going to be 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour unless otherwise posted. But, you know, the big highways there in Vancouver, for the most part, are going to be 100 kilometers an hour, 62 miles an hour. Okay? Uh... Abyss, how many times can you fail your test before it's serious? Uh, are we talking about the practical test, Abyss? You're not going to fail. Okay, get that out of your head. Remember, I can do this. Visualize the win. You're going you're gonna to do what you need to do. You're going to practice the slow speed maneuvers, and you're going to pass your driver's test. You're going to be awesome. Okay? Uh, Dave, I had... Okay, so we talked about that. Yes, straight line backing. Yeah, you just had the test... <laughs> Oh, Umar. Hello, Dr. Rick. How are you doing? I'm doing, I'm sorry I'm late. No, that's great. It's awesome that you could show up. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, so there we go. Excellent. Uh, DC, any tips on how to judge the right side of the vehicle? I seem to be driving too close to the curb. So one of the things DC, uh, maybe now that you've been practicing driving a little bit, uh, go back to the fundamentals. Look at those uh, beginner exercises for new drivers. Go back and revisit that. And for the right side, there's no, there's, it's not surprising that you're having difficulty with judging space on the right side of the vehicle because that's your second biggest blind spot, right? The biggest blind spot's out to the rear, but your second biggest blind area is out to the right side on that passenger side of the vehicle. So what I would suggest to you is maybe go down and get rent some of those 36 inch, uh, one meter tall delineators, those pylons and use those and just practice and see how close you can get to the pylons on that right side and do some of those exercises. And that will really help you out to determine uh, where your vehicle is on that side of the vehicle. Okay, and just on that note of uh, emergency vehicles for the purposes of your driver's test, make sure that you pull over to the nearest side of the road immediately because if you don't pull over and come to a stop for the purposes of an emergency vehicle, you're not going to be successful on your driver's test. It doesn't always have to be the right side. If you're on the, you know, in the left lane, you may have to pull over to the left shoulder to allow the emergency vehicle to go past. Now, if you're at an intersection and you're stopped waiting for the traffic light, you simply may have to just stay stopped because what happens is if the emergency vehicle comes up, whether it's police or, or uh, ambulance or fire trucks or you know rescue services, uh, if you're all stopped there at the intersection, they may just go into the oncoming lane of traffic to get around you. So just stop. Uh, the other thing that you could do potentially at an intersection for the purposes of an emergency vehicle is you could just turn right to get out of the path of the emergency vehicle. Or if you're in a roundabout, you can go through and then pull over once you get passed in the roundabout or again if you're just entering the roundabout turn right to clear the way for the emergency vehicle for the purposes of your driver's test it's kind of the fly in the ointment on your driver's test because most of the time it's not going to happen okay but every now and again it might uh farron it would be hilarious if rick was born in august <laughs> i'm not born in august lightning but my son is born in august his birthday is in august so no i'm not uh, born in August. Uh, Farron, to the person who disliked the video, let's take this outside so we can talk. Oh, there's Farron is just, you need to be an ambassador. You're a smart drive test ambassador for sure. Uh, okay. Uh, wonderful. Thank you for answering. You're most welcome, Mike. Uh, solid. I did my driving test almost a year now and very lucky I did my parallel parking perfectly and apparently never did it again. I might do it in the future. Uh, you might sell it. Depends where you end up living. Uh, you might end up with just street parking, and you have to parallel park. Uh, you know, so sometimes you do have to do it. And uh, <laughs> I'll just tell you a funny story in addendum to that. Sell it. That uh, one of the things we used to teach with truck driving was we used to teach uh, new students how to parallel park a tractor trailer unit, and they would say, "Well, I never have to parallel park a tractor trailer. What are you talking about? This is utter nonsense." And uh, we would you know, my, myself and the other instructors would always kind of chuckle because one of the places that you stop at night to go to sleep in the truck is uh, you'll go into the rest area as the pickle parks, as they're called in the States. Uh, the pickle park's full and then you go out onto the on-ramp and you park along the on-ramp and that's where you sleep for the night. Well, 
you come out to the on-ramp, one of the trucks has already left, you got to get into that spot. So how do you get into the spot? You got to parallel park. You got to parallel park the tractor trailer into that spot, otherwise you're not going to get into that spot. So you got to parallel know how to parallel park a tractor trailer uh, so that you have some place to sleep at night. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Milan, for the first maneuvers, we have to pull into a space. It seems like the lane they have us drive down uh, in the closed course isn't three feet away from the space. Uh, we turn into any insights would help. Uh, which Milan, which uh, maneuver are you talking about? Are you talking about um, reverse stall parking, like backing into a parking space? I think Corey did put up the video uh, for us on COVID and the maneuvers that you have to do for that. So that's there as well. Uh, Hunter, I understand, but the, there is that road between highway speed and street speed. Should I gradually slow down or should I be street speed as soon as possible as I am leaving the highway? Okay, so Hunter, it's called a deceleration lane. So you stay up to highway speed until you get onto the deceleration lane. When you get onto the deceleration lane, then you begin to slow down. But keep in mind... Uh, when you're slowing down, that those yellow signs, those speed signs along the off ramps and whatnot, they are cautionary signs. They're not regulatory signs. Okay, so be close to them, but not com you know you don't have to be completely uh, in keeping with those uh, cautionary signs along the exit ramps. Okay, uh, <laughs> James, I am going to take a close course test in Florida. What should I ex expect to do? Okay, so definitely. Uh, James, have a look at the playlist. I think Corey's put up for you on COVID-19 and the slow speed maneuvers that you need to do. I've done those. So uh, parallel parking with cones, three point turn, reverse stall parking. So backing into a parking space and there's one more, you know, straight line backing. Those are the three, four maneuvers that you'll be required to do for a uh, closed circuit test. Uh, the other thing they potentially could have for you there in Florida is having like a mini course, right? Where you have to do a left turn and a right turn and stop at a stop sign and those types of things. That is another option that you have to do for the purposes of your closed circuit test. And it depends on which county you're in, in the state of Florida, as to which variation of that closed circuit test you're going to have. Whether it's going to be a mini course or whether it's just going to be uh, slow speed maneuvers for the purposes of passing your driver's test. And Corey's put up the... Uh, the uh, COVID-19 in your driver's test, uh, the playlist there, okay? And he's also put up how to merge onto a highway, freeway, or motorway, and that was what uh, Hunter was looking for there. Perfect, excellent. Colin, I uh, just finished watching the curb video, helped a lot. One final question for you. I am able to easily back into a spot using the 45 degree method, but not the 90 degree. Am I able to use the 45? So Colin, yes, if there's space there, you can back in using the 45. But the other thing that I would suggest to you, Colin, is, is that in off hours, go down to the test center where you're going to be taking your test and figure out where they park, okay? And then practice parking in the parking lot there. But as I, again, I want to reiterate, go down on the weekend, go down after hours in the evening or early in the morning or those types of things to be able to practice there, okay? So we're, we're getting near the hour here. So uh, give it a thumbs up. Hit everybody drive that pardon the pun, drive that thumbs up button. If you're watching on the replay, hit that as well. And uh, if I didn't get to your question here, uh, smartdrivetest.com, rick at smartdrivetest.com, leave me an email. I'll do what I can to answer your questions and help you out and get you to be successful on your driver's test. Check out the courses over at the Smart Drive Test website. Lots of courses on special right now uh, to help you out, be successful, pass your driver's test, and to be a safer, smarter driver, okay? Kabucha, uh, exiting the highway can be dangerous though because if you're driving on the highway for a long period, your perception of speed may be altered. And exactly, kombucha, that's uh, velocitization. So when you're coming off the highway, when you're coming off the interstate, make sure that you're looking at your speedometer, not for the whole time that you're coming off, but definitely have a look at it and make sure that you get your speed down, right? Because you become accustomed to that high rate of speed and you don't want to be going too fast when you get off on the on-ramp. And that's an excellent point. Thank you for that. All right. Okay. <laughs> Anaheim, you're not going to fail. You're going to pass. Okay. Definitely going to pass. There we go. Excellent. So that was a tremendous live stream. Thank you everybody for the awesome questions. Thank you for the participation. Ah. 
participation. As I said, I think it was a record. We had 75 people on the live stream. That is absolutely awesome. I'm just overwhelmed. That's just brilliant. So wishing everybody the best. Good luck on your driver's test. Drop me a note if you have any questions at all. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.